Hi, welcome to Marky Mark's DIY. I'm Amber. And I'm Marky Mark. And in this video, we turn a closet into a half bath. closet and turning it into a half bath and consolidated them all so you can get a comprehensive look at the project as a whole instead of uh, little pieces uh, such as the floor going down or the vanity being made etc. So this will be more like the whole thing taking place. And of course you also noted this notice that Amber's uh, skills with the camera have improved. Uh, some of the videos early on weren't as good. We were using a phone as opposed to a camera, so we've got better quality equipment. And she's gotten a lot more practice. Marky Mark's Handyman Services, available 24-7. Demolition specialty. <laughs> well, got the framework in for the new master bedroom door bathroom, so here will be the door, and that will go into the master bedroom, or bathroom will go be right there, and this will be the door for the bedroom. We got the subfloor in. There'll be a bifold door here to cover up the laundry room. And where the cardboard is, that's where the toilet will be. And the vanity. And right in here, he's going to do cabinets to here where the vanity will be. So the be cabinets all above there for storage. Uh, and door frame is all taken out. The whole door frame is gone. That'll be cleared up. And that way, if per chance both bathrooms are used and I have company over. I can just shut my bedroom door and the other bathroom will be available without impeding privacy. So yesterday we took some rough cut birch right from the mill and we had to cut it down on the table saw run it through the planer under our dollar store tablecloth and also process it on the bandsaw also a dollar store tablecloth love them and we wound up with much smaller finished piece, pieces of the size we wanted oh, let's see the grain thing see how the it's nice and so smooth. these just require a final sanding after assembly and we assembled the face frame, partially, to a bathroom vanity. And we will be completing the assembly of this. So, we've been working and working and working on our vanity. And we're finished our doors, as you know. So we had to sand them and stain them. Amber's been doing the sanding and staining. This is the door, one of them, for the front of the vanity. Drawer fronts. Didn't she do a good job? This is a kick panel on the very bottom of it. It's a little bit lighter than everything else. And moving out, this is a door that will be hiding our water heater in the back of the bathroom. 
which she did a most excellent job staining. We're going to spray that with urethane. Avoid louvers at all costs. They're a pain in the ass to work with. And finally, we have some of the carcass of the vanity, the sides. And as you've seen before, the face frame. All stained up. Uh, I don't know where we left off last time. But recently, demo. We're finished demo. Really. <laughs> well, we've come a long way since then. But we have the plumbing roughed in now. That's for the sink and for the commode. Obviously, the commode will go there. And the vanity we're building, which I know you've been paying close attention to in the Real Marky Marks workshop, goes here. So Amber's been painting tonight, and I've had to remove the covers for the outlet switches, yada, 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 tape those up so they don't get painted, because paint inside your electric sockets is bad. So she's almost done. I've got to come back and do the corners and little tidbits here and there. But uh, since this is a nice, damp environment and a bathroom, we've used green board. I don't know how the colors are going to show up because, like, your purple paint showing up blue on the Facebook. However, uh, it was quite a challenge because, well, they had their own ideas about how far and how many and what direction the studs go. So, there's a little bit of taping. The sheetrock got screwed up. And, uh... I switched over to this netting tape as opposed to the paper tape. I can't find the edge to pull it apart, but it's like a net. Stuff's wonderful. And of course, old house, so uh, there was a lot of skim coats and a lot of sanding. And believe you me, I am a firm believer in no sanding. However, this one got a lot of sanding. So, we're almost done in here as far as the walls go. Valves on the pipes that we just ran to the bathroom. Loki's coming to inspect. That must have passed. <laughs> so these were capped off. So we got some valves and we're taking the caps off and installing those. We're using Teflon tape to seal the threads with, which is kind of pretty standard for pipes. Another half a turn on this one, which is too tight. But I may get it good enough. One more. There are three one for the toilet, these two are for the hot and cold on the sink. I just have to figure out which one's hot, which one's cold. <laughs> I always get them backwards. Huh, nothing out of that one. Something tells me that's the hot. Anyhow, we'll figure that out later. Minor detail. So after we get this part done, I can... Uh, Probably put down the floor next, but I need a. I don't like that. I need to get some uh, paper to put down in between the uh, flooring and the subfloor. Okay, we should be ready to turn the water back on. Hopefully we don't have a flood. So I've just turned the water back on. I don't have a valve, main valve for the house. I've got to turn it off at the meter. So the water's back on. 
no Niagara Falls, no drips, we're good to go. So, I love it when something works. And I don't know if the tools here in the video, but the tools I've anticipated using are a razor knife, scissors, stapler, and tape. So they gave me a factory edge that looks like a spinnaker. Why they did that, I don't know. Just to screw with me. It's a little tricky going through here, obviously. Let me find their length first. Somewhere thereabouts. Our door frames are not seated on the subflooring. That makes room for carpet or whatever else. Gives room for expansion, and it'll be hidden by the baseboard anyway. possibly can. Alrighty. So all I need to do is keep it in place for the flooring. since it's only oh about three feet wide oh pardon three feet wide cut out the uh, commode drain here that would be a good thing that way nothing backs up Mode backups are very bad. some tape down here just to seal it but uh, because of the overlap I'm not worried about that however I'm going to put a piece of tape down just to uh, keep it keep the edges down for the flooring so it doesn't curl up on me and staples are probably okay because this is like a, a padded type of linoleum but I found that like the little hard vinyl tiles any imperfection in the floor a bump a dip a staple will 
come through with wear, not come through the floor, but the vinyl tile will get the same dimple or raise where the staple is, etc., etc., as you walk on it with uh, time. And we must have got a factory edge here, which uh, we obviously don't want. And I think, if I recall, this strip's like 20 feet long. So what I'm going to do is just trim off the factory edge here. It'll probably fit under my transition, but it's about an inch wide, so it may not. And because I'm putting down a transition, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, although I've got a good line to follow, so it'll be damn close. Congolium. That's what it says on here anyway. So now it's time to put it down and secure it. Uh, it should be trimmed for the width this way and pretty much the length that way. I may have to trim off a little bit toward the end, but we'll have to cut this little step out as we go. We have access for the toilet. Always a good thing. So this is going to be a little bit tougher than paper. I may have to pull it back out here, do a measurement kind of thing. and. Cut it and then put it back down. We'll see. See if I can cheat or not. I usually can. I've done it with carpet and the paper and other things, but I've never done congolium. So we'll say it's going to be tight down here. Fold it back, we'll be in better shape. There we go. Let's see what happens now. Might have to trim the sides a little bit. Now I can't grab it, of course. There we go. out. I hesitate putting a staple or two down at this end yet because I may have to, like I say, pull it back up to do that cut down there. Come off this step. I may as well do that now. It's not going to get any easier. So that's going to be 11 and a quarter inches. Eleven and a quarter. And that may be a little tight. But I'd rather trim off more than have an exposed area. Where there's no flooring. Now this is going to be a little bit trickier to get underneath of the door frames too because this stuff's a little bit stiffer than the paper. So we'll see what it takes to get it under there. So that turned out good. Okay, I'm under that side. I'm just kind of folding it a little bit to get it under there. Okay, it's under that side. 
a little bit more length than what I thought, but that's okay. <clears throat> so let me secure this end. Kind of straighten it out if it needs to be straightened. I'm on top of the toilet rough end, so that shouldn't be an issue. There's nothing I can hurt there with a the razor. The flange is metal. And uh, there's a punch out there for the actual pipe that hasn't been punched out yet. I'll wait until we're actually going to put the toilet down because that goes into the main trunk line. And we don't want to smell that with a big four inch hole in the floor. Underneath of the vanity. Ah, the really important stuff there. Uh, I'll bet all the people back east that are like having snowstorms threaten them wish they were sitting on this. But anyway, that's not what I wanted to show you. In there is the supply lines for the sink. And of course, I like these stainless hoses, they're nice. And they go right on up behind the sink, which is a little hard to see because, of course, there's not a lot of room here. And there's the drain pipe, which at any rate, the vanity's installed, no leaks, and watch this, it works. Hot. Cold, hot, cold. <laughs> we have fizzy water. I didn't know that. It's that um, the uh, oh the screen and yeah the it really aerates. So we're gonna pop it back apart here and glue up the dovetails and fit the backer on there. Are you gluing so, the back on as well? Yeah, to keep it square. That'll help keep it square. So, I'm going to separate my dovetails.
pretty far along with the <coughs> trim from Wayne's coating. Pardon. We wound up with two good lengths of two inch by whatever it wound up to be. I didn't measure it. This uh, fur, and I just finished putting a little radius that Amber wanted on the top with our new slick plane and it does a nice job. I want to sand the top a little bit and get a couple of the rough spots where we had a little excess of tear out because the grain kind of goes like that and of course the plane uh, likes to go one direction with the grain so if you go against it it's a little less cooperative but that's all part of the fun so after that we're going to uh, after I get this sanded we're going to stain it up and that'll be it I cut this one it's a quarter inch long but uh, we'll be able to fit that and some of this made already we made the frame up dovetailed them together and you can see that in a previous video we'll click a link to it and we had the back cut so I went ahead and glued that on and shot some brads in it and I had to do a little planing here and there to get that fit perfect and uh, put on the top and bottom face frames and I put a support underneath for the uh, side uh, pieces so I gotta wait for this to glue up and so I can attach those and then we can start on the doors after that or actually before I started uh, looking for a board because we're going to need more strips for uh, this cabinet and the next one. So I figured I'd process uh, some wood, make up some more strips. It's glued up. I can't do much more of that until the glue dries. We're going to clean up the dovetails on the other uh, cabinet. cabinet. And I've got my extra long punch dog. Isn't that too cool? For tall things. So I can hold my work if I clamp it. So let me find a clamp here that'll suffice. There we go. Got to clean them up. A lot of chiseling. Break out the chisels. I guess that's it for now. We've got our medicine chest being glued up. I'll, again, I'll have to put in a center face frame for the doors. 
and the bigger one's not too far behind. It's about where the small one was so. yesterday. Until we get more clamps. That's about it. There's a little shot of the dovetailing. Not perfect, but they cleaned up okay. They'll be covered up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. On the sides, they were kind of hidden. Door frames. Just putting the fence here. And then we'll turn on the saw and get to cutting. sanded nice and smooth and just before you apply your stain you want to use cheesecloth to get any dust off of the surfaces you can take a little damp cloth and run it over and it'll right braise up any burnished grain that gets put down and then give it a light sanding and it'll take it off so it'll be nice and smooth. And we're using Minwax Gunstock number 231. How can you go wrong with Gunstock? And I'm applying it with a rag. I do have a little brush here, an acid brush for welding I use for the corners. These brushes are great for glue and whatever they're disposable screws in I'm gonna put two bottom ones in and as soon as I relocate the studs right there <coughs> I'm drilling through the birch so the screws don't split the wood and make a mess because we're shooting for beautiful. find it to be certain with the handy dandy stud finder every girl wishes she had one of these let's get some screws in this thing drill bit so I can put some screws in it. I want to pre-drill my holes so they don't get ugly. And I'm going to catch the 
studs, hopefully. That's um, the plan. So, not quite perfect, we'll get to that. <laughs> That's funny. So, now I need to climb up there and hold the cabinet to mark I'm guessing stuff. I can be off too. is up. So this was the last thing to go up. Designation. So let's go in and take a peek at our finished product and how it turned out. It's beautiful! That was the request. So this is it. We did everything ourselves. Uh, the design was Amber's idea. All with the cabinets and the Wayne's coating, etc. That was a vanity that he built, and we salvaged an old vanity on the top. Just the top. To put on there. That was in the old bathroom. A little bit. And of course, the toilet he didn't make. I didn't make the toilet. But he did make the trash can. I made the trash can. Got our rose and shamrock inlays. Isn't it pretty? Madrona. Purple heart with walnut inlays. Uh, we used birch for the uh, cabinets. And uh, I believe the trim was uh, hemlock. And we wound up using some mahogany, I think, in there too since that was actually cheaper than hemlock. And the mirror was used uh, just an inexpensive long back of the door mirror and he cut it up and after making the cabinet and inserted those. Made it beautiful as mandated. Mm -hmm. And of course during this whole process we had the uh, plumb for it. There was no plumbing. Uh, redid a lot of electrical stuff behind the walls. Updated the electrical. Yeah, a lot of updating with the, the juice. Having a heater installed, conveniently located. Yeah, that'll One keep your stuff cold. warm. And a vent. That's a vent and a light. Yes, yeah, so naturally that had to be piped out through the roof as well, so there's a lot of stuff behind the walls that you don't see that needed to be done underneath the floor, either walls. Wow, there was a lot to the bathroom. There was a lot to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, this was just an old, ugly, burnt orange, dark water heater and storage area before originally there was a door right here and he moved that out and moved it over to here. And the trim was a process we made together. And that's pretty much it. Extra half bath increased the value of our home. Plus, we can sit at each end and wave down the hallway. That's special. Well, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. We love to hear from you, and have an awesome day. Toodles!